Okay, uh, thank you Sumita and thank you Kutina for uh, sharing your experiences, whatever you gained from the industry. Thank you so much and uh, how about the students, do they have any uh, doubts or questions uh, so far, whatever we have explained? Any questions so far? Any doubts? Uh, because we, 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 we would like to make this session interactive, so that's why we are asking uh, any doubts so far, or can I continue? Yes, so it is quite clear. Okay, so any questions from the student side? On the concepts what we have shared so far? No? no. Yes, sir. I have one question, sir. Yeah, carry on, carry on, please. We would like to make this session interactive. Sure, please carry on. What's your doctor? Sir, uh, is there any uh, technology available instead of the detectors and cassettes? Kutina, can you, can you uh, hear the doctor from the student? Yeah, no. Can you repeat the question, please? Sir, is there any advanced technology available in the market instead of cassettes? Yes, 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 of course, that part I am going to cover. So, um, as long as you know, our previous uh, parents or everyone, previously we bring our X-ray film with us to go to the hospital, right? Let's say, if I get an X-ray, I bring my X-ray film with me to the hospital to show to the general practitioner or the medics, you know, someone else related to that. Now we are, uh, there are more, many uh, advanced technologies are being applied in the industry, especially X-ray industry. After that, we don't need to bring our X-ray films. Everything is getting digitalized. So hereafter, we are going to bring our digital image with us. Do you get what I mean? Uh, what I mean? So in our mobile phone or in our laptop or in our all the digital devices, we can get the digital images directly from the X-ray department. And we can bring it with us or we can share with our preferred general practitioners and we can get the opinion. Not only from near to your house or anywhere around the globe, we can share it with the physicians and we can get the opinions. This is happening because of the advancements in the digital image, especially in the X-ray technology. Is that your doubt? Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, you are, you are. Any, any, any more doubts or can I carry on with my parts? You are most welcome to ask any doubts because you guys are students and uh, real parts you can study from your college. So industry people can uh, explain the things whatever we get or we practice in the industry. So we really we are really happy to get the questions related to the industry because you guys are also going to work in the industry, right? So please uh, ask your expectations or any doubts. Sir, I have a doubt, sir. Please, please, please carry on. Sir, uh, we are using intensifying screen, sir. And uh, yes. uh, by that we are applying radiation. Yeah. Is there any chance that uh, uh, the radiation to the intensifying screen will be damaged? Can you, can you, uh, can you hear the question? At uh, what, at what, uh, uh, at what uh, limit that? Uh, the intensifier skin able to uh, bury the radiation the damage. Okay, actually let me explain. So, when we manufacture the intensifying screen, there is an amount of uh, phosphor uh, doping material. So, if we have a thin or uh, we have uh, something uh, uh, thick or uh, if we don't uh, properly manufacture the phosphor layer or the doping layer means uh, it will cause the screen to turn or uh, it uh, cause some uh, reflective or uh, divergence property. So in that case it may have a problem of an intensifying screen to damage during the exposure of an X-ray. So it is not clear. Yeah, manufacturing yeah. site of uh, doping site. So we have to choose the proper uh, doping material uh, like uh, calcium. So that's why they are mostly use uh, phosphor as their material. So uh, because it have an excellent property to convert uh, these things from uh, photon uh, heavy radiation to light. Is that clear? 
Yes, sir, yes. Okay, okay, thank you, okay, thank you. So, any, any, any more doubts from the student side? No other doubts? You can proceed with your presentation, I think, Aston. Okay, then we can okay. again open the floor for questions. Sir. Okay, okay. I mean, it's explained very clearly. So, I guess, sir. Okay, man. Okay, okay. Because we want to talk with the students. Because rather than uh, sitting and listening, yeah, yeah. we just want to get yeah, their yeah. expectations. Because those are the people who are going to work in the industry. So they may expect several things. What we are going to get from the industry. Actually, what how the industry looks like. What are the problems we face in the industry? So they can ask their questions, and we can share our experience. But exactly, we we can share whatever we face in the industry. We are really happy to share our experience. Okay, any doubts? So, can I carry on with my part? Students? Yeah, if any, any more students have doubts, they can unmute and uh, ask. So, so, in my session, uh, students are mostly welcome to unmute your un your microphone and ask your questions. Whenever the doubts you have, in my session, you can ask, right? No need to wait until we finish the session. You can, you can ask. You can also, they can also type in the chat box. Sure, sure, sure. So right. If you look at the chat box, if anything is typed, I will, I will let you know. Okay, ma'am. Okay, okay. Let me uh, let me explain from my slide. Uh, so, uh, most of you guys uh, have seen or have gone through any kind of x-rays. There are so many types of x-ray based on the anatomical part uh, we go under. For example, let's say it may take x-ray, chest x-ray, bone x-ray, dental x-ray or joint x-ray, right? So, there are so many uh, types of x-rays based on the anatomical parts we take. So, there are some other x-ray types I have uh, presented here. These are X-ray types. Now let's uh, focus on what are the different types of X-ray machine in the industry. Mainly we have three types of X-ray machines in the industry. First one is called fixed X-ray machine. So in a hospital you can see an X-ray room. In the X-ray room we have a fixed X-ray machine. So that's a big huge X-ray machine which is fixed with the floor and the ceiling. We cannot move that X-ray machine. That is called fixed X-ray machine. So every patient whoever wants to take the X-ray, they have to go to the room and get the X-ray done. Second one is called mobile X-ray machine. This one is pure, uh, totally dedicated for transferring uh, the patient into uh, the patient's convenience. So let's say in a certain operation theater, a, a, a broken bone surgery is going on. So the surgeon wants to make sure that the broken bone is properly attached by the plates. So they want to make sure by seeing the X-ray machine. So how they can transfer the patient from the operation theater to the uh, X-ray room, they can So here that's why we have an X-ray machine called mobile X-ray machine. So this machine we can, can transfer from here and there. Mostly we keep this X-ray, mobile X-ray machine here to the operation theater. So whenever, uh, according to the surgery, we can use this mobile X-ray machine. Third one is uh, dental X-ray machine. This one is pure, totally dedicated for dental purposes, right? Okay, now uh, this one obviously you have seen in a dental physician or surgeon's channel window. Uh, this one is called an X-ray lobby, uh, an aluminum screen emitting a dark, bright light. So, since the X-ray film is very dark and the images which are applied on the X-ray screen is slightly uh, very light, so we have to put the X-ray screen on the X-ray lobby, then the white illuminant screen emits a bright white light to the X-ray film, then we can see the X-ray film clearly. So, what are the specialities we have in this kind of X-ray lobby? It is it can be work under very low uh, voltage conditions and the current it consumes is also very low current. There are several Indian companies manufacturing, I mean the local Indian companies as well as the foreign manufacturers. So mostly uh, we can get uh, this, uh, this kind of X-ray lobby from the local companies as well. The prices are starting from 1100 itself. 
Okay, now let me talk about some kind of advanced uh, technologies that are being applied in the X-ray industry. So, compared to the conventional X-ray images which was uh, shared by my friends in their previous slides, can you see these two images? Right? So, you can obviously see these two images are very high quality and high resolution because we are applying some kind of advancements in the imaging technology. So, um, I, I'll talk about that in my next slide. Without increasing the radiation dose, we are able to get this kind of high quality and high resolution images nowadays in the modern technology. Okay, so what are the technologies that is being applied to get the uh, highly enhanced digital images? First one, you can see new image processing technology and algorithms are being applied, new new technology is being applied, digital detector technology is being applied, and some other hardware modifications as well as the improvements to get the high resolution images. Apart from the high image enhancements, we can get the expanded applications and software. So we have upgraded our software from old versions to new versions which can enable us to uh, make the advancements in the X-ray industry. And the third thing uh, that is related to the previous question we got from our one student, remote viewing system. So remote viewing system in the sense, in future no one is going to carry on their X-ray rooms with us. Nowadays also in, in some major hospitals they have started, digital image, uh, digital image X-ray rooms are going to be in use. So, like the other images you carry in your phone, you can carry your own digital X-ray with your phone and you can share with your own preferred uh, general physician wherever he is and then you can get your own opinion. So, no need to worry to bring your X-ray image or some people may say we forgot the X-ray image to bring. No worries, we are going to bring it, everything will be done. So now I'm going to uh, introduce some uh, kind of major advanced um, X-ray applied devices which are used in the industry. So these are the modern equipments in the industry. First one is Philips product which is called Clarity IQ Technology Applied Series. This one is an X-ray machine uh, manufactured by Philips. Second one is an angiography system. Again, angiography, the students may know angiography is also based on X-ray, but a different uh, application uh, for intravenous purposes, we can use the angiography. So this product is uh, manufactured by Siemens, and the technology used here is RTSQ and RTSQ in technology they are using to uh, modernize this angiography. The other one is a uh, fluoroscopy system, uh, an uh, image guided surgery a fluoroscopy system uh, manufactured by GE Healthcare, right? And the series name is uh, Innova IG. So, as you can see, I'm uh, talking about the major manufacturers who are very popular around the globe uh, GE, Siemens, uh, and the last one is Toshiba. Again, Toshiba is also one of the most popular manufacturers for medical devices. Here you can see another uh, novelty in uh, equipment, infinite light product. So these are some a few products to give you some better examples of modern technologies which are applied in the in the extra industry. Okay, now uh, let me talk about how we are going to monitor the radiation. So let's say if I am a patient, I am going to the hospital and my X-ray is done. At once, then I'm coming back home. So the X-ray technician or the X-ray radiologist work in the X-ray department every day. So don't you think that kind of work experience in the X-ray department every day make problem to him because of the high radiation he is facing every day? Yes, of course he, he will face several problems. But how we are going to avoid such problems to the healthcare professionals? Before going into that, let me uh, talk about the radiation concept. So don't think that we get the radiation from the artificial materials like artificial chemicals or artificial devices like X-ray, CT. We can get the radiation from the natural resources as well, like cosmic. This uh, image clearly uh, illustrates we can get the radiation from the cosmic waves, uh, some kind of plants and its radiation, some kind of radio material, natural rocks. Even a patient directly from the X-ray or CT or from some kind of a radiotherapy, he can act as a radioactive material directly from the room. 
So how we are going to uh, safeguard our X-ray technicians from that kind of a harmful radiation? So the scientific unit of measuring for the whole body radiation dose is called effective dose. So the term effective dose is used by the healthcare professionals to measure the radiation in the humans. Uh, the unit is in millisievert, uh, M as we millisievert, right? You can see in my slides. Even though we have other uh, units called uh, Ronjan, Sevier, and Clay, we usually use millisievert in the healthcare industry to measure the radiation level in the human. So, in this uh, table, you can clearly see, let me go through this table very quickly. So, at first, you can see some uh, anatomical structures and the procedure. Here you can see the radiation level once we go to this kind of an anatomical structure. So, for, uh, for example, let me explain a normal thing, X-ray, chest X-ray, right? So, if we go for a single chest X-ray, we can get 0.1 millisievert radiation amount. To get this much radiation amount from the natural resources, it takes around 10 days. Can you see around 10 days? Accumulately only you will get this much radiation from uh, uh, like the artificial uh, materials like X-ray. So you can compare from the natural resources how less we get the radiation levels. See this on the dental X-ray, 0.005 millisievert. So to get this much radiation from the natural resources like uh, cosmic waves, it takes around one full day. Okay, now let me talk about the measurement, how we are going to measure the radiation level for the healthcare technicians or the radiologists. Dosimeter is a, a commonly used uh, device to measure the radiation level in all fields, not only in medical fields. In all fields, wherever the radiation is being applied, we use dosimeter to measure the radiation level around the data. You may have seen this kind of uh, dosimeter in films or even in the industry, you may have seen this. They keep it in the hand and they just uh, hold it in the area near to the radiation level and it shows the number. So, how we are going to measure that one in the healthcare industry, uh, especially on the healthcare professionals? We apply film batch dosimeter. We call that one this film batch dosimeter. This is a batch can be uh, worn by the healthcare professionals or the radiologists with their cold or uh, they can wear this with their wristwatch. And this one is going to show how much radiation they are putting is getting a job. So, uh, in each and every country, they have their standard rules and which permits uh, a certain healthcare professional can get this much uh, threshold level, uh, this much radiation level only, he can work. If the threshold level is exceeded, then he has to, they have to give the leave with the uh, uh, leave, he has to leave, right? So, this is the uh, structure of the film batch dosimeter. So, once we talk about the film batch dosimeter, I can explain you in the US. Maybe this may be an information to you guys. In the US, if you are working as a radiologist, from uh, first six months you can work continuously. Carrying this film batch dosimeter, you can uh, work continuously for six months. Then, once you reach your threshold level, so your high authorities will monitor your batch and they can see how much radiation level every day you are absorbing by your body. Once your first six months is finished, then they will ask you to take immediately for the rest six months. Meanwhile, they are paying you, right? Why they are giving the uh, second six months early? Uh, you may have studied about the term uh, half-life, right? Half-life basically means if, uh, the lifetime of a radioactive material to lose its radiational level into half. So let's say uh, I am emitting 100% and if I am uh, going to emit for 50% from 100% to 50%, how much time I am going to take? That, that much time is called half-life of a radioactive material. Right? So this kind of film batch dosimeter is being applied on the healthcare professionals to monitor the variation level and they have to make sure that the healthcare professional is working under the safe zone. Okay, this is the structure of the um, pill batch dosimeter. Here they can apply the name or the serial number of the healthcare professional. Okay, since you guys are students at the moment and you guys are expecting the industry or you might maybe having some dreams how you guys are going to work in the industry, let me give a small 
uh, introduction about the industry. So BME people can work in the industry basically in three categories. First one, you can work as a clinical engineer or in-house BME. Second one, you can work in the company as a company biomedical engineer. Third one, you can work in the research field as a research engineer or as a researcher. Uh, in our countries like India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Pakistan, those countries, they don't have, actually unfortunately, we don't have much research that going on. So we focus on the in-house BME working in the hospital as well as the company. So what will be your duties if you work in a uh, hospital as a in-house BME on the X-ray department? So you have to take the general maintenance and troubleshooting. You are the responsible person to purchase the X-ray cassettes. Whenever the cassettes are getting finished, you have to purchase it. Getting approvals from the radiology authorities. And so if you are going to build a new X-ray room, you are the responsible to get the authority from the radiology authorities from your governing bodies. Then you have to prepare the quotations for new purchases, uh, like a uh, new X-ray machine buying or new films buying. You have to make the purchases and you have to submit to your uh, relevant departments. And then you have to organize with the X-ray technician to get the safety certificate. Have you guys seen the safety certificates in the X-ray uh, room anywhere in the hospital? So you may see any kind of certificates hanging around the corner in the X-ray room. So those are the certificates certify the public that that kind of an X-ray room is safe for the public use. Next, uh, that kind of a certificate can be renewed once in a year or twice in a year or maybe once in a six month. That's up to the hospital and that's up to the uh, up to how many ra uh, radiations or how much X-rays they are taking in a single day. And the last thing you need to know is a warranty. Uh, let's say a company is keeping an X-ray machine to you with a warranty. Company take care of the X-ray machine once the warranty is finished. For uh, let's say five years, the company will take care of the machine for the entire five years. Once a five year is finished, I mean the warranty is finished, the hospital biomedical engineer has to take the uh, um, responsibility to uh, maintain the device or they have to sign a different agreement with the company to take care of the machines. That is called post warranty period. So you, the, the administration has to pay to the company to get the warranty, even the warranty payment is finished. That one is called post warranty. Sometimes the company may train you in-house BNP to uh, take care of the machine. That one, of course, you can pay the company and get the training. Then you don't need to depend on the company. Your own in-house BNP can take care of the machine. So this one, of course, when you make a new purchase, you have to talk with the company, the relevant vendor company or the relevant manufacturer company. You have to talk with the terms and conditions clearly. How we are going to get the warranty? What is going to happen once the warranty is finished? Will you train our in-house BNP? So these kind of questions you have to talk when you deal with the companies. Okay, now let me explain about the duties of a BNP in a company. First one, hospital, this one is a company. So you guys have to make sure that your products, any products, uh, let's say, or ECT or any kind of healthcare uh, products, is reached a certain quality for the public's use. So quality analysis for your products. Promoting the products as a product specialist. So you will be trained and specialized in a certain product. So if you are going to sell X-ray machine, you will be specialized in X-ray and you have to uh, make the marketing for the certain product for the company. Because in company side, there are two types of companies you can see in the industry. First one, we call it manufacturers. So as my friends explained, GE, Seaman, Toshiba, those are the manufacturers, top level companies around the globe. They manufacture their own products, right? And the second category of the companies are called vendor companies. Vendor companies, of course, they don't manufacture any products. They buy the products from the manufacturers and they sell it to the local entities like hospitals, small, small clinics. So there are so many vendor companies in the Indian industry. So even that one, of course, my friends has explained. So get the idea, there are two types of companies itself. So you can join yourself in the manufacturing company like GE Siemens if you have the opportunity or you will be joining yourself in the vendor companies. Right? Both companies do the marketing to promote their products to increase their sales. Okay, now uh, 
in a hospital, what are the requirements you need to make sure to uh, build a new X-ray room, right? So you have to make sure that the wall, especially compared to the other departments, the X-ray room's wall must be very thick. So here the diagram shows how thick the wall must be, and the wall, the room must be soundproof. The doors must be lead door, and the technician must be all lead door. Why especially lead? Why we are leaving the other uh, metals? Lead has the special characteristic that it doesn't allow the X-ray to go through it. So these are the safety procedures we have to wear and we have to put it in our doors to uh, cut off the X-ray to come from the room to the public. So now you can see a general X-ray rooms illustration. You can see uh, this one. The lead lined uh, partition, it is surrounded by the entire X-ray room. Compared to the other departments, the X-ray wall but the X-ray rooms wall must be in length, right? So this one is called dark room where yeah, they develop the X-ray like the other studios we develop the photo from the film rolls. Here in the hospital we have a dark room. From the films we develop our, the, the final film we give to the patient, they call it dark room. So especially we have whenever we design the X-ray room, we have to make sure the wall must be thin and the wall must be made out of lead line. So whenever you start working in the hospital, you have to make, you have to talk with the civil engineer who are designing, and then you will get an idea how we are going to design the X-ray room. Because in each and every country, based on the hospital types, this kind of plan differs. So I am presenting a general idea. Compared to the other walls, this wall must be in length, very thick wall. Okay. So other other kind of troubles my friends has explained. Now I am going to focus on the problems we face in the X-ray fields. So as you can see in the first image, the image is too light. So this is made this one of the reason we get this kind of images. Your X-ray machine is out of calibration, or you have calibrated your machine in a very long time ago. So you have, once you get this kind of a problem, you have to recalibrate your X-ray machine. Second image is too dark image. So why we get this kind of image? So sometimes you may use a single film to get two or three images. So each and every image taking, you have to change the uh, film to get new images. And your image will be clear. You have to reload every time. And the third image shows there are some blurred uh, shapes uh, coming in between these images. So when we have this kind of image problem, uh, the focal area is too large, that's the problem. So we have to collimate only to the area of interest. So if you focus on the wall, you have to collimate to the focus on the joint only. You cannot focus a huge thing, you have to focus on the certain area if you have this kind of problems. And you have to change the cassette size. The next one is you can see some kind of thundering board structures in between the X-ray. Why we have this kind of problems? Because of static electricity. Static electricity you have studied in your small classes. So you have to use anti-static cleaner and as well as you have to increase the humidification or the humidifier amount in your X-ray room. The next email shows there are so much dust in the X-ray room. Why we have that? You will, we have to store the uh, X-ray film or the cassette in a proper dry and dust-free place to avoid such problems. Here, this one you can see a thumbprint. How, why we, this one happens? Because of an improper handling. So we, we have to handle it properly. Okay, now uh, each and every component's troubles and their troubleshooting methods have been explained by my friends. So I am going to explain as a BME in the hospital how you are going to troubleshoot generically an X-ray machine. So basically or mostly or from my experience, if we uh, maintain the X-ray machine properly or once in a while, we don't have a problem at all. Maybe I know the hospital where I was working, we were using the same hospital X-ray machine for around more than 50 years because there is no problem because we do the maintenance regularly. Sometimes we may fail to have a problem with the tube only itself. So let me talk about that. Some general maintenance, first one, comes in the tube plane. So tube, of course, you know, tube is the very important part which converts the electric, electric uh, energy into X-ray. So inside the tube, all the important components are there. There are two types of tubes. First one is a sealed type. So 
Well, while manufacturing the tube, it is sealed in both sides. So there are no possibilities that us or the foreign parts can go inside. So the seal type is safety for use or you have less work compared to the open type. The next one is open type. Open type means it is open in both sides. So there are a high possibility to get the dust or the foreign bodies getting accumulated inside. So we have to clean it manually. Second uh, maintenance, a uh, general maintenance method is uh, general performance and functions verification. So a trained technician may disassemble the machine to conduct a thorough clean. So who are the trained technicians? Of course, they are company people who are providing the machine. Or in some cases, the company people may train the hospital biomedical engineers. Then of course, they can consider themselves as a trained technician. Then you are allowed to disassemble the entire machine and you can clear. Unless the company is giving the authority within the warranty period, you cannot do anything with the machine. Uh, I mean, without the general maintenance, you cannot do anything deep in the machine. Because once you do anything raw, the company won't take care of the machine at all. They will say you can take because you broke the warranty. Right? So they make sure that you have to make sure whether the machine is under warranty period or after the warranty period. Right? So in-house VMA can do the general maintenance according to the maintenance. So once you purchase a new machine in the, in the catalog, they can ensure uh, what are the main troubleshooting methods the hospital biomedical engineer can do. So you can follow that one. That one, of course, you are you know. The other one is a uh, functional check include taking images of a reference material, conducting an uh, operational scan, and testing the internal computer and the general calibration techniques you can do. The third one is Performance and safety testing. Routine performance and safety testing should be done by a trained professional. Again, this one must be a company paper or if the company allows the in-house DMV, you can carry on. No risks while using the machine. So this one is up to hospital biomedical engineer. You have to make sure that the radiation is not high or is under the permitted amount and the electrical shocks, you have to avoid the unwanted electrical shocks using the uh, X-ray machine. And the parts must be cleaned and the hardware must be tight. So the hospital administration or those whoever buy the X-ray machine, the administrating authority make sure that they get the imaging mach uh, machine preventive maintenance contract with the company. Right. Uh, that's all from my experience on X-ray. So here you can see these are the platforms of our healthcare engineering team. We are very active in so many platforms. Especially we are very active in our blog and we have created our YouTube channel from last one of years where we post different types of videos in different series like medical device series, healthcare technology series. And soon we are going to launch another different series getting experience or interviewing industry people. So you guys, students can get so much ideas from listening to that kind of an industry people. So we would like to uh, request you to subscribe our YouTube channel to get the modern ideas from the technology. So uh, basically I'm going to share all the links in the chat itself. So that's all from our side. Uh, and over to you, madam. That's all from our experiences. Now I can share all our relevant links.